This is my remake of Breach. For this remake, I'm using my sample pack Destruction available at Threat Collective. The serum patches in this project are going to be in the new update for Revolution Volume 2. So let's get into it. When I got into this, I obviously started with the drums, then I added the basses, then I started working a little bit on the build up. But for this video, we're going to start with the build up, and then at the end, I will reveal how I made the drop. So we have this kick here that is basically being layered with this impact as well. And then as you can see here on this second part, it hits again, but not with the kick. Now, I just want to point out the original one does have a lot more elements, but this is the basic things that I noticed that made the track fire. After that, I added a snare buildup and this snare is called Hunk from my pack destruction. I just pitched it up a little bit and I grabbed a MIDI buildup from this new pack I'm working on right now called Threat MIDI Buildups. But if you wanna be the first one to get it, make sure you sign up to the email list or you can pre-order it right now. But basically, you pick a snare like we did here and then you just drag this and bam. You have a build. So I'm doing this because I feel like that shit's so fucking tedious, like making fucking builds. So I'm making this pack for myself. Basically all the packs I make for myself, but I share it with you guys because I like sharing. I channeled this snare to the mixer and I added this, uh, another tool that I'm working on. Basically I saw one of Skrillex's racks on Ableton and I noticed that he had two parameters that were a high cut and a low cut. I could see how that's super useful. So I made this super simple patcher rack with a low pass and a high pass knob it's just a parametric eq and this will be available in threat patcher racks volume 3 again you can pre-order it now i don't know when it's gonna drop because i work on music every single day i constantly add stuff to it and when i feel like it's ready it'll drop but if you order those now they're obviously going to be a lot cheaper than when they actually come out i use the easy filter to put a low pass and have it slowly open up as well as at the end Right here, it's very subtle, but it's cutting out that low end. We're gonna talk about, we're gonna talk about the, this Reese. So this Reese, it's very simple. Really what's important here is the portamento time because I wanted it to go up in pitch right before the next impact hits, like the original does. See what I mean? Look, if I were to move this and make it, let's say, a little bit faster, it, it switches so quickly, it doesn't have the same effect, it doesn't have the same feeling. And this is just a D2 saw wave with a notch filter, a high pass filter, some distortion. Now this patch will be in the Revolution Volume 2 update, like I said earlier in the video. So if you already bought the pack, you should be getting an update email very soon. Now, the next thing I added is these chords. And this patch is also inside Revolution Volume 2. The next element I added is actually the lead from the drop, but I put a washout effect and lower down the volume a little bit so that it fades in. So I did the washout effect with my washout rack available inside Patcherax Volume 1. I know I got a lot of products now. It's been like seven years I've been doing this. I used a fruity balance to control the volume. Now there is a lot of effects on this lead. They're not super complicated, but I'll explain those later when we get to the drop. Okay, so one thing I forgot to mention is that the Reese has some automation on the pitch. So you can see here on the MIDI, the Reese goes from that F to another F sharp, but two octaves higher. And then it goes down to an F, I don't know why. <laughs> Let me put it on F sharp. Maybe it'll sound a little bit better, but it doesn't really matter. It gets really, really low. And with this pitch automation, I'm bringing it up. So it serves as a riser effect. Now, another thing I want to point out about this Reese is that I have the release very, very high up because on this part, 
right here, I wanted the resound to fade out. I could have done that with a volume automation. Instead, I decided to do it with the release tail so that it fades out if I let go of the key two beats before the next bar. Then I actually ended up bringing down the release like this with this automation clip here so that when we get to the pre-drop, it doesn't bleed into it. And I ended up resampling this Reese for the drop, but again, we'll get into that once we get into the drop. The last two elements here is this riser, again from Destruction, and this sweep, again from Destruction. All right, so now we get into the pre-drop, which is just a kick and this laser sound from Destruction. That brings us into this snare. And now this snare has some automation in it. I think I'm gonna consolidate this and put it in the pack as well so that we can have a few of these like huge snares ready to go inside the pack. But basically what's going on here is that it's this snare. The two effects that I've added here, you can see that I automated the effect to come in after the transient hits because if I didn't do that, then the transient would get blurred out and you wouldn't have that same punch. So the two effects is this reverb and this limiter to bring the reverb up even higher. And you can see here that both of those effects actually turn off as soon as the drop hits because we don't want that to bleed into the drop. Now the next thing that I added in the pre-drop is this come on sample that I just recorded real quick but I also added into destruction. And it's just me saying come on with a frequency shifter. Come on. And this Patcherack that I'm working on right now and it's definitely going to be inside Patcherack volume 3 and it's a pre-drop vocal processing thing. Uh, it just has a de-esser, some multi-band compression, a little bit of blood overdrive and reverb. And I also add a bunch of knobs inside the patch rack for you to be able to control specific parameters in those effects. That brings us into the last part of the pre-drop, which is just the snare. I, I wanna call it like glitch almost because it's just very, very fast. The way I did this, I just went to the grid and I put half a step and then I just put a snare every half step. And that brings us into the drop. I honestly, I like it a lot. I mean, I made this today. So I made this in about three hours. I'm sure the original one took way longer and, and it definitely took way longer because it has a lot more elements. The second part of this drop is actually even more complicated and it has even more elements. But this alone sounds really sick in my opinion. I actually like the sound design even I, I dare to say that I like my sound design more than the one in the original. As far as the lead, I think mine has more energy or grit. And I like those textures, so. Obviously it's rough, but there's a lot of stuff that we can learn here. I'm also able to showcase the cool sounds inside Destruction. So the first sound is the kick that we've been using in the buildup. This one's called DX2. And I fitted out the tail so it's a lot shorter. So we have a kick on the first, fourth, and sixth beat. Then we have a snare on every third, obviously, and this one's called Stacks. And I just removed the little sweep at the beginning of the sample because I wanted it just to hit completely out of nowhere. So the next thing I added is these crashes to follow along the kick pattern. And then some crashes to add a little bit more energy. As you can also see, I've meticulously faded out the tail of the crashes because I wanted more control over them. As far as effects, we have this noise. And I named this noise God because it's white noise and it's actually like the nicest white noise I've ever made and it's, I, I know that that sounds like a weird thing to say, but then we have this sweep that brings us into the Jungle break. That's pretty much it. Now we get into the lead and this sound. 
This sound is actually from a track that I was working on like maybe a year or two ago. This is how it sounds. But I knew that I could use it for this as well because it was very similar. And I want to talk about the MIDI first. So I'm going to turn off the effects and show you the MIDI. So this is the patch and this is going to be inside the Threat Revolution Volume 2 update. That's the MIDI, that's the sound and I don't want to go into the sound design for that because it, as you can see, it's pretty complicated um, and a lot of this stuff just happens over long periods of sound design sessions. Let's talk about the effects on it. So before I even added this chain of effects, I added a Pro Q to remove the low end so it doesn't clash with our sub, a Valhalla Room for some reverb, and the washout that you heard in the buildup. Now, I was like, you know what? Let me use the same processing chain from the song that I'm working on, and let me just put it here. I'm not gonna lie, I was like, as you guys know, these projects are available on Patreon. And I was like, damn, I'm about to share this sauce for something I haven't even released yet. But I really appreciate my Patreons. So there's the chain for my Patreons. So yeah, if you want to get this project, consider becoming a Patreon. So it's a Saturn II, a Effector with a little bit of delay, a Pro Q that looks like that, a Limiter, Trash 2, which is affecting the middle band and the high band. And then we have another Pro Q cutting out some of those super, super high end and the low end again, just in case. And a fruity balance to control the volume from the buildup that you heard earlier. That's it for the processing on this sound. It goes from this to Let's talk about the next element, which is the bass. So I grabbed this sustained sub from Destruction, and obviously, you know, I turned on the envelope, set the root notes, and I wrote this MIDI here, slide note, and then just D sharp. That gives us this. And obviously that's all being sidechained. Then I took the Reese, I consolidated it. So we have this. And then I put some effects, but I don't really think they're doing anything. Yeah. <laughs> and that's just a little bit of a background element to layer on the bass. Then we have this bass fill from Destruction, of course. And now you may be wondering, how did I make it go up in pitch? And you're probably thinking, did he put it up an octave? No, I did not put it up an octave, not the MIDI at least. I actually went into the patch and I put a macro on the oscillator B octave modulator or whatever. And I automated that on the playlist here, as you can see this macro here, to go up one octave, so you can see here. That little thing, that means it's going up an octave. That's how we turned up the pitch on the second part. And then finally, we have this random rave stab that I found online. That goes up 100 semitones, which is one note. Into an impact, which is actually the sound of an actual trailer, like one of those big trucks, the engine of it. <laughs> I recorded that. Bonus tip, one thing I didn't point out is that on this drum bus, which is the kick and the snare going to, I have a limiter on it, but not really limiting. The, the ceiling is all the way up. It's working more as a saturator because I have the saturation down a little bit. And that's pretty much it for this remake. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out my samples and presets at Threat Collective. Yeah, let's listen to the final thing.
<laughs> All right, don't forget, if you want this project, consider becoming a Patreon. Don't forget to leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.